All right, so I've been trying to track down um, which brands are actually cheating or not telling the truth or innocently not telling the truth um, or just not doing their full research when they're sourcing everything. What's happening here? So went after Ancient Minerals, tried to get certificates of origin from them. They will not give any. They call it proprietary, which is strange because you're trying to get the source of one ingredient, not a formula, not something they need to protect, um, but just one ingredient. Where is it sourced? This should not be proprietary, especially as some of their products only contain the one ingredient, for example, the flakes or whatever. And so you can say, hey, we're just trying to get, there's, there's no formulation here that you're protecting. So the proprietary argument makes no sense. There's only one ingredient in there. So on those flakes, but Anyway, no one will give it. I've called uh, Ancient Minerals. I've called Now Brands. I've called Trace Minerals. I've called uh, and written to a lot of other brands too, smaller brands. Um, so nobody gives out certificate of origin. So for me, this is smells really bad of like Asian influence because this is how this works is they come in and try to sell this under the guise that it's from Zechstein or Permian or Himalayan or whatever kind of word they want to use typically to hide the Himalayan probably the Tibetan exploitation they would probably use Zechstein which is an era of time in addition to being a location and so it can't be protected the name so anybody can say Zechstein on anything um, and I mean, they could risk maybe a lawsuit, but the word itself cannot be protected. You have to find a trademark, somebody who's got like, for example, Zechstein inside trademark, which shows that it's coming from an exact source, which is what we're using. And so if you don't have a trademark, it's not coming from the Zechstein. There's like scant evidence and more because here's the deal. Well, you say, well, what's the big difference? Why get the magnesium all the way from Asia when you can get it from just Holland and keep moving forward? Well, the deal, the deal is is that people aren't really doing that. The whole industry has changed. So people are actually just, instead of importing some sort of magnesium from somewhere and then importing glass uh, plastic bottles, um, which we do glass, of course, we don't do plastic, but a lot of brands are doing this plastic bottles and ordering it. And instead of taking that to all their laboratories and making all their creams and lotions and all this kind of stuff, China steps in and goes, hey, let's skip all of that. And we'll just send it to you finished. The Zechstein from Zechstein with the creams and lotions, with your marketing, with everything set up, and you just make your money. And so it sounds very lucrative, but the difference is you just change the molecule completely because you just went from like a natural state clear stone molecule to a chalky stone that takes extraction, solvents, chemicals to get that stuff out and then convert it man-made molecule like not made by nature over 250 million years man created it and purified it and got it down to the pure magnesium whereas nature in the other case is what created that purity that clear stone so there's a huge difference between something natural of that level and the time involved and the beauty and the clarity and all those things then if you just like take some chalk and just extract the heck out of it and take everything out of there <laughs> there's a big difference at the molecular level even though a lot of scientists won't agree with that because they're like oh magnesium equals magnesium a equals a milk equals milk or raw milk equals pasteurized milk and you know you can take raw milk <clears throat> from a little Jersey cow and you can compare it to the worst industrial pasteurized milk on a microscope and they'll say, oh, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Don't worry about it. Nothing to see here. And it turns out there's a huge world of differences. So we're trying to help people see that and not get the fake stuff. It's written all over the fake stuff too, coming from Zexon, coming from the Netherlands seabed, coming from, and it's just a fake world. Now, how are they doing it? Well, typically they're probably being sold to by Asia under the guise of Zechstein with certificates from Holland, possibly not certificates, but maybe lab reports that show that it's been analyzed in Holland, which doesn't mean anything because that doesn't show origin. Labs don't trace origin. They don't send agents to go confirm origin. And so this whole reality is just kind of like over people's head. And so they think, well, we're just buying the right stuff here. This is Zechstein from Seabed minerals and we're buying it and nobody really cares after that about the molecule anyway so let's not push too far into our vision let's not go seek out if it's really from asia or whatever so what happens is asia can send you everything finished and that's the key the key is everything's done you don't have to bottle you don't have to import you don't have to uh 
take in two different shipments and and combine those and all this old fashioned way of doing things so 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 they say but the truth is is that that old fashioned way is the way to get the right thing and that's why we import from Holland we bottle in glass we only have one ingredient we do the right thing so don't go cheap on magnesium and don't gloss over it we have to stop glossing over everything that's how we got into all these health trouble and and pharma ramp, 65 and older pharma ramp that we're in, and medical slavery, and all the things that are on the way, especially with age. So we have to find the right stuff. You know, you have to get that raw milk, not that pasteurized, cheap, like low quality, high estrogen laced milk through, you know, everything from soy to whatever pesticides and colza and canola pulp and all the stuff they feed those cows to make them fat because they don't want anything to be small or thin or normal looking they want it to all just overproduce and so all this stuff you you can't compare that with the natural real thing and so we're trying to help people see that because they're hoping you won't see it and they're definitely hoping that you'll just keep riding the pill paradigm because then you never get enough abundance to detoxify all these toxins you stay at this kind of low level of deficiency like just barely deficient non deficient if you're lucky but the problem is you're not even because your blood tests don't show the deficiencies they don't they don't show hardly anything uh, we've been lied to. Most of the magnesium deficiency shows up in the dermal layer, not even in the RBC test that all the doctors think is the best test for magnesium. Nope. You got to figure out the dermal layer. Why do you think surgeons test the tongue when they try to do heart surgery? Because they know that to test magnesium deficiency in the heart, you do not use the blood. You use the tongue because it's soft tissue to soft tissue. So we're learning this. We have to test the soft tissue itself and it's a patchwork test meaning it has to be tested in different areas in order to understand how this works. So that's why our Greek and Roman ancestors bathed and the ocean was the greatest surface area absorption you could imagine. So we've abandoned all these traditions, we've replaced it with a pill, we've separated from the sea, and the consequences are huge. 200 years of tightening genetics, a more hypoxic state within the human being because magnesium, the flexibilizer of all that calcium, has created a rigid genetics going forward in the medical slavery. So we have to wake up from this stuff and get the right stuff and stop playing around and stop going cheap on the basics of life. You should never scream about getting cheap eggs or cheap butter or cheap bread or cheap this. Those basics need to be the most expensive buys you can. You need to get the most expensive eggs you can find. And so they don't always have to be expensive if you have certain you know situations around you and farmers and you know, farmer's market, soy free, and you can ask questions and stuff like that. But in general, you do need to spend money on the basic areas because you want to do this right. Same with broth. You don't want to spend 20 bucks to do a month worth of broth. You want to spend 50 to 60 bucks. You know, you want to spend more money and get higher level stuff. The reason that we're going through all these problems with gelatin and vitamin C and all this stuff in our body, like when I was in Europe, I didn't, people don't take vitamin C all the time and all this inflammation and chiropractors and stuff. This is coming from soy-fed foods. Those soy-fed gelatin, the lack of gelatin in the whole American system, which is strange. You go to like a, you know, a prepared foods kind of vendor in France, there's gelatin everywhere and everything. As soon as you get here, that same vendor, no gelatin. What have they done? They've removed that whole soul layer of the body, that whole level of the body. And so there's a lot of inflammation in that level now because we have weaker gelatin, soy proteins that are harder to degrade, and all sorts of other things composing that gelatin that's being passed on through this bad cycle from glyphosate on down to, you know, protein deficiencies and, and just well, you know, animals that have you know, had a good nutrition and lived outdoors and all these things. It's become overly industrialized. So you can't find a lot of this stuff without farmer's markets because I've yet to find a soy-free hen in the middle of a grocery store. I have never seen one. <clears throat> so we have to be careful with this stuff because then we end up messing up our gelatin in our body. We end up messing up all the inflammatory matrix, the non-inflammatory matrix, that the structural level that was supposed to keep us from being inflammatory. And so then we take vitamin C, uh, you know, tons of acidic foods because we're trying to break down some of this stuff that's still in there and and get these things down to the right size but it's like it's it's like it's an un endless circle because we messed up on the the core part of it so get back to the core the strong stuff don't mess around see our podcast see our books come get help theheartoftradition.com